I grew 450 pounds of potatoes in the laziest way I know how. And I'm going to show you exactly how I do it so that you can too. I'm Tony O'Neill and this is Simplify Gardening. Growing potatoes is not hard. You can just throw them in the ground and you'll get a harvest at the end of the season. But if you want a large yield of quality potatoes, then stick around because I'm going to share with you all of my tips from sowing right the way through to harvesting. Let's start right at the beginning with sprouting potatoes. Now, the jury's out whether or not sprouting makes any difference, but I always do for a number of benefits, even if there's no growth benefit. Three of the reasons that I sprout is because, number one, seed potatoes are usually sent out from the suppliers early January and the issue with this is that we can't plant them before the frost dates. So by sprouting them you are allowing them to actually stay in good shape and it's something to do with these potatoes so you don't get spindly shoots. We don't want that. By sprouting potatoes, you're able to see how many sprouts form on the potato, and that allows us to control the size of the potatoes. A little bit more on that later. And the third reason, loads of people get sprouting wrong. They tend to put them in dark areas and they end up with these long spindly shoots. It's no good. When you're sprouting potatoes, what you want to do is put them in a bright, cool, frost-free place. The brighter the better, you'll get short, stumpy roots. That focuses the energy for good top growth when the time comes. 13 years ago, I was looking for alternatives to growing potatoes in the ground because of pest issues, things like wireworm that was destroying my crops. And then for the potatoes that weren't destroyed, I was putting the pitchfork through them when I was harvesting. So um, I was looking for alternatives and that's when I came across these. And they are Oakland Gardens 30 litre containers. They are eight uh, US gallons in size. So I started growing in these and that sorted out the two issues that I had when growing potatoes in the ground. And over the years I've perfected how I grow in you. And here lies the uh, secrets to the huge harvest I get. Now filling these can get expensive if you're buying the soil from the garden centres or big box stores. But I make all my own compost, so I use that. It's a free resource for me. And just over there, you'll see all of the ingredients that I'll be using in the next batches of compost. Here are the steps that I take at planting time. Number one, take your tubers and decide whether you want smaller potatoes or larger jacket style potatoes. If you want larger potatoes, remove all of the sprouts except for two. But don't just break them off. Digging them out with a coin or a knife, this will only allow two sprouts to grow on the plant. It will also reduce the number of potatoes the plant will grow, but it uses its energy to grow those tubers much bigger. Number two, fill the container to one third its depth and mix in some slow release fertilizer. Here I'm using blood, fish and bone meal. But if you can't get it, just use something that has a lower amount of nitrogen and higher potassium or phosphorus. Place two potatoes opposite each other, eyes facing up and cover over until the container is just above our full. Here we need to make a decision on what varieties we're growing. If it's a determinate or early potato, then we can use four seed potatoes in this pot. If they're indeterminate or main crop, then we will use just two. If this was a main crop potato, mix in some additional feed in this layer. Then fill the container to about two inches from the top of the compost. If they are determinate, we can place another two potatoes opposite the two below, then fill the container as before. Add some more feed into this top layer. Note, we fill the container right to the top at planting time. There's no need to allow them to grow, then hill them up as some people do. This is an in-ground growing method that some people have dragged into container growing. Save your time. We could leave it just like this, but I found that a two inch layer of mulch is a good idea for multiple reasons. Number one, it helps to retain water in the compost, stopping evaporation. But any overwatering from rain or water that you give them, well, this is held in the mulch layer and it's slowly wicked into the compost as the compost dries out. Number two, it helps keep potatoes warm in the spring and cool in the summer. So it allows for a more consistent heat within the container. 
And number three, it stops the potatoes from going green. As potatoes grow, sometimes they push up through the soil and this mulch layer will stop that happening because they're covered over by mulch and you won't get the green potatoes that are wasted. Hang on, Tony, you just said this is the laziest way you know how. And I know this sounds a little bit involved, but when you think about it, you're putting some potatoes in a container and filling it with soil. And this enables anybody to grow potatoes, whether they're on a farm or whether they're on a 10 storey apartment, because everybody will have a space for a small little bucket of potatoes. And the other reason that's so good about this method is that you can get a kickstart on the season because you can plant them in the containers before the last frost and you can keep them in a polytunnel or greenhouse or coal frame. And this allows you to allow the plants to grow that soon as the last frost is gone, you can put them out into their growing space. So this has loads of benefits. Now, if you're looking for some of these, there's a code in the description below. Unfortunately, at the moment, it's still only for the UK. For you guys in the US, Australia, I am still looking for uh, a company that will want to work with me and stock these products. But as soon as I get that, you'll be the first to know. So the support system, that's another adaption that I made to my growing techniques over the years. I used to just plant them in the containers like this and I would just let them grow and they would flop over and they would sprawl over the path. And that's an issue for a couple of reasons. And the first of those is that um, because they're over the path, you can't get past them, you're stepping on them and it makes it really difficult when watering. And another reason is that the sun bakes the top of the containers and it uh, dries them out much quicker it's really difficult now the first of my support systems was some stakes in the ground and some cow wire across the top of them and that worked really well the only issue was in the second year we had a storm come through in the summer what it did it pushed the homes against the wires and because it was just a small surface area it caused some of the homes to bend over prematurely killing that home so the potatoes didn't get to their full potential so I had to adapt again and I built this system which is a timber frame system much like the first one we have stakes in the ground but this time they are 18 inches above above the top of the container, which allows for the foliage to grow through, but it supports it more towards the top of the foliage. And because of the one inch surface area, this two by one framework across the top of it, the homes can push against it, but they don't actually fold over. They have that good surface area in which the winds really need to push against. And it has a number of benefits. And the first of those is all of the foliage is held together in one group. The wind can blow across it and this surface area stops them from folding over. The second reason is it keeps all of that foliage up high. It's right above the top of the container and the sun doesn't beat down and bake it to death and it, it allows the container to have that more consistent temperature. And then another reason is we can put a watering system across the top and this is what's gonna save us so much time and make this a really lazy system. Now, I admit there's a bit of work in setting up these systems, but once it's here, you know, this year I haven't had to do hardly anything, the system's here and away we go. So if you've ever grown potatoes in containers, you know that there's a huge amount of work due to the sheer amount of watering that's required. I wanted to automate that system. So just across by there, I have a bank of five IBC containers, which holds 5,000 litres or 1,300 gallons. And that is then linked via this pipework here from the IBC on a small Bosch pump. It's a 12 volt pump and uh, it has its own little batteries and it is fantastic. That then travels across from the IBC across the floor we have an up tube here and it comes across into this header pipework. Now, this header pipework is a complete square, 
What we don't want to do is just have a, a main head or a manifold and just lines coming down because what this does, it gives us inconsistent pressure. But if we have it as a complete circle or square, what it enables it to do is to uh, have a consistent pressure. And then in each of these areas, we have two emitters with pipework, a little spike and a four litre per hour drip emitter and these are fantastic and when we're putting the potatoes out we simply just poke one of these in and we set the volume that we want and uh, every single container has one of these in the system is set to come on for half hour a day but what i will say to you is the system needs to be altered a couple of times a year as the potatoes grow initially they won't need so much water but as they start to flower you really need to give them the moisture because the homes are tall they've got all of that to you know, to sort of support and also providing enough water for the tubers to grow but we automate the system like this it's a fantastic way all i've got to do then later on this year is come here and pull these ones out we can leave the big plastic in place and just cover this the system over and then it's just a case of plugging these back in in early spring it is a fantastic way it saves you so many hours when you're growing potatoes the other thing to note as well is that when you're watering you don't want to just take it for granted that you're going to give them half hour of water a day like i said we need to test it every so often and the way i do that is i just take my index finger and i push it down into the soil like that and if it comes out and I've got compost stuck to my finger, then I know it's moist enough. It doesn't need anything. But if I stick it in and it comes out and it's bone dry and nothing sticks to my finger, then we know we need to up the watering a little bit. So there will be, until you get used to the system, a little bit of trial and error. One other thing, as you might be able to see just by here, is that I've added a string around the sides. Now, initially, this isn't a bar of timber for a reason because it's hard to get the buckets under um, the framework otherwise, but we just literally loop a string around and this helps to keep the foliage to, uh, growing straight when they first start growing so they come through the holes here and you don't have it hitting the side of the framework and going outwards. So that's another little adaption that might be worth you thinking about. Top tip, the flowers on potatoes should be removed in my opinion. The reason for them to flower is to produce seed and we will not be growing them from seed but from seed potatoes. Therefore, as a gardener, we have no reason to allow the plants to produce flowers. This energy can be better utilised in producing larger tubers. The plants do not need to waste this energy and we can use it to our advantage. So remove the flowers when you see them. There's a couple of other reasons why we want to check the water in the uh, containers. And the first of those is too much or too little water can cause scab and that's that corky sort of appearance on the outside of the potato skins when you come to harvesting. And that is because of irregular watering. The great thing about having a watering system is you can pretty much nail that problem. None of my potatoes have that. The other thing it does is it helps you to prevent blight and it does that by watering directly at soil level and because of the mulch it the mulch just draws us straight down so what it's not doing if we remember earlier on we spoke about evaporation there's no humidity coming up and that's one of the key factors with blight is hot humid conditions or wet foliage which is another thing that the watering system can prevent so um, I can't remember the last time I had probably 13 14 years ago the last time I had blight and you'll see that uh, we have no issues at all no matter whether they're blight resistant varieties or not and here's the other thing that um, I want to tell you about it frees up your time this is the biggest time saver it's why i call it the laziest way it's so easy and basically you would normally be watering potatoes in containers or if you have many like i do for hours on a day and this system automates that completely you know i can literally just come put a battery in it and press a button if i wanted to i could even set up a timer on it um, and just let it do it automatically but i'm not about to do that like i said for all the reasons before harvesting container potatoes well 
again another lazy thing to do and like normal ground grown potatoes where you've now got to go and dig them out trying to avoid stabbing them and everything else uh, simply with a container potato you literally just cut the homes off you can leave them in the buckets for a couple of weeks if you want to uh, for the skins to harden up and then you simply grab that container dump it into a wheelbarrow or turn it over onto the floor and you can literally just sift through that soil and pull those potatoes out putting them into a bucket or a box or whatever else you want to store them in it is so easy anybody can do it it doesn't have to be hard work it's not back breaking work and as you can see today it's absolutely boiling and sweating and everything else the last thing i want to be doing is digging trenches of potatoes out of the ground here's another bonus here you never miss potatoes when harvesting this way whereas with their ground grown counterparts well you're always missing them and you get volunteer potatoes growing up the next year amongst your carrots or whatever else so you don't have that issue either here's a top tip for you kids absolutely love doing this with potatoes they love searching through that soil to find those little potatoes they get really excited about it so allow them to help you with the harvest it's a fantastic way to get them growing in the garden now when you've harvested your potatoes you can just lay them out on the ground for a little while in this nice hot sun that we're having at the moment and allow them to dry off completely don't wash them keep the soil on them and they will store just like this perfectly fine speaking of which that's going to be the topic of my next video is storing all these potatoes because loads of you in my last video asked well how do you store all of your potatoes i do have an older video on that but um, i'm going to make a new version of that video so that'll be the next video uh, you can see we've got a lot of potatoes here to store and we will be storing these and it will feed us throughout the winter and the spring but we won't be storing them like commercial companies where they bring them down to near freezing temperatures that's where the damage is it's not the duration and i think a lot of people maybe the way i worded the video or the last video um that they thought that storing potatoes long term was um uh, wasn't a problem and it isn't a problem it was the the sort of methods used to store which creates the issues when you come to buying store-bought potatoes and that's how i've grown 450 pounds of potatoes the lazy way now i do understand that this looks like a lot of setup and uh things but what you have to understand is i've been creating this process for 13 years and it's been something i've been doing on a consistent basis and now it works flawlessly as you can see the great thing that i want to say is though that once this system is set up it is as simple as getting one of these containers filling it a third with compost putting a bit of feed in it chucking two potatoes in it filling it to the top putting some mulch on sticking it out here sticking one of them in and just monitoring for the whole of the growing season and then at harvest time grabbing that bucket and turning it out into a wheelbarrow and pulling the potatoes out it is that simple as you've seen throughout the video i've got all these buckets behind me now that soil can be used again and i'll put a link for the video for that in the description below so you're not having to reuse soil. so even if you are buying soil we've already established it's expensive to do that but even if you are having to buy soil well you can reuse it no digging required no hard work required it really is the laziest possible way to grow potatoes now if you want to see why i'll never grow potatoes again this is the next video that you should watch i'm tony o'neill and this is simplified gardening remember folks you reap what you sow and i'll see you in the next one bye bye